What's up, NASCAR Heat fans? David Land here, ready to bring you race number 30 from Charlotte. And you may be asking, what happened to race number 29 from uh, Dover? Well, uh, I had a recording failure, recording screw up. Uh, so the video that I thought I recorded, and if indeed did record, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, uh, the Hapog capture screwed up. And uh, that video is lost to the ether of time, which is really unfortunate because I had a really good race. It was very entertaining. Uh, probably the most fun I've had driving in a, uh, in a NASCAR heat race for some time, but uh, that's the way it goes. So let's take a look first at the chase grid, which, uh, which happened just, uh, or what uh, caused, uh, what were the results of Dover. Uh, Kyle Busch won the race, and he had already had one win in the chase, so there you go. There's the cutoff. Kenseth Biffle, Almondinger, and McMurray were out, and so... Um, these are your round of 12 competitors. Uh, also, as soon as we got out of uh, Dover, uh, we had new sponsorship commitments or new sponsorship offers. And I decided to go with uh, uh, to try to go for a top 10 from Tax Act, a, uh, a top 20 qualifying from Peak, and a top 15 from Lincoln Welders to try to really boost my cash here at the end of the season. And I just noticed that in the bank we have some money, 300000 so we may be able to make an, an improvement here. Uh, no, we can't. Uh, I should have, if I would have finished better at Dover, we could have gotten the shop control software, but unfortunately, unable to do that. So we will head to Charlotte, get qualified, and hopefully be able to, uh, to get up there and race to the front like we were at Dover. So qualifying here at Charlotte, more important than it usually is. You may notice the peak antifreeze and coolant logo on the back of my car. Well, they're going to pay me uh, 10 grand or whatever it is to qualify 20th. So it uh, is really uh, a very good idea here to get this car up into the front of the field. And hopefully I'm able to do that. I didn't feel like it, I got through turns one and two very well. I get the qualifying standings up as we go down the back straightaway here. Uh, let's see, three and four, definitely not flat out. I should have lifted going in, get that exit speed, which seems to be a little bit more important on these ovals. At least I was noticing uh, exit speed was really helping me uh, at Dover. I'm going to get passed by Martin Truex here, the winner of the not Indy 500 this year. So I get up into the wall. That was kind of terrible. I don't know if that corner was better or worse than, uh, than the corner I had taken previously. We'll just have to see. Obviously Truex has got the legs on me down the straightaway. Lift off before getting into the corner. Look how much time I made up there just by lifting early and carrying momentum through the corner. Well, we're faster than Stenhouse, and I was looking at the scoring monitor and uh, got into the wall. Ooh, that's annoying. All right, the momentum is hopefully sufficiently built back up. Logano and Truex are the only two cars ahead of me in this qualifying session so far. Ooh, that was a little bit low on the corner there. I always feel very nervous in this game down by the apron because, of course, the uh, whole spin-out thing, and I improve, so fantastic. Take two tenths off of my best lap. Let's see if we can improve one more time here uh, on this lap, and then we'll sim the AI results right down to the bottom of the track, down the back straightaway around Austin Dillon, who's uh, coming out of the pits. Into turn number three. Let's see if we can get a really good corner here. Car moving around just a little bit. Nope. I drove it in really deep there, thought I was going to grip, and it did not. So let's cross the line here. Not have a good lap. Lift off. Sim the AI result. Sixth place. I'll take it. Uh, and it more or less guarantees that we'll qualify 20th, though. Round two, uh, I think there's like 22 cars. So we still got to out-qualify just two people. So let's get to it. All right, so round two going for that additional 10 grand from peak. Uh, well, hoping, hoping we can get it here. Got to lift off just a little bit. Let's see if we can get that good exit. I'm kind of con concerned about my line there. It wasn't a very pretty line through the corner. Very, very high and then a, a low apex uh, off of the corner. And into turn three, right down to the bottom. Ooh, this is very good, actually. That was a really good corner. Let's see if we can get that 31, a low 31, maybe a high uh, 30. 31.1, yeah, that was a great lap. Fantastic lap, actually. And I proceeded to immediately get into the wall and pretty much kill my momentum for this lap. So let's do a couple more laps here. 
and uh, we'll see what happens here, and uh, then we'll send the AI results. Okay, we're running in the draft of Jamie McMurray here. I feel like I may get a very, very good lap here if he doesn't hold me up too much. Here into turn number three. Got a lift off. Don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall. Eh. And Jamie McMurray just runs into the back of me. Uh, well, we're second anyway. He's across the grass doing a blowover challenge. And let's see, just to send the AI results. We're going to make it third and into the next round as Brad Keselowski takes us out. All right, let's do it. Round three going for the pole here. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I say going for the pole, and then I immediately had to bail out of it in turn number four. Not a very good lap there, 31.2. Should be able to improve on this lap, though. Not terribly concerned about it. I mean, at 31.2, I mean, we're, we're really, really competitive once again. We were competitive at Dover, and we're competitive here. So hopefully this race actually gets up on YouTube so uh, the people who are like, you fuck, unsubscribed in the comments can have something to to uh, to watch and, and enjoy. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's uh, pass the line here. We didn't improve on that lap, um, proving the doubters right. Uh, we're third place right now, which is one of our best qualifying efforts of the season. Uh, we're just only behind the Penske cars, actually. Now qualifying Harvick, Kyle Busch, and a host of others. Let's get down and turn three. Car's a little bit loose down there, right up next to the wall. It's probably not going to be a very fast lap. Well, especially because I did that. That's some fancy driving. Would have been, probably would have been a fast lap if I hadn't screwed up that corner. So let's, uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, this is good. This is a really good one and two. I can tell you that right now. We're going to get that toe off of uh, Johnson down the back straightaway. Now, what we don't want to do is get held up by JJ here. JJ the jet plane. Take that high lane. There we go. I have the high ground. And draft him down into the tri-oval here. And... Wow, we didn't improve, actually. Jimmy Johnson actually ran a faster lap time than us. Which is kind of shocking. But whatever. Ooh right up next to the wall. Wow, we were actually racing Jimmy Johnson here in qualifying. Uh, uh, the, a qualifying race has broken out in group qualifying, and I almost spun it. Well, we're down. Uh-oh. All right, that's a good place to sim. Looks like we're going to be seventh. But that means we get $10,000 and a decent starting position for the race. So let's get into it. Let's see if we can improve seven places. NBC Sports comes to you live from the home of NASCAR, the Charlotte Motor Speedway. But as the field of 40 drivers get ready for the Bank of America 500, only 12 of them still have hopes to take home the championship. I'm Rick Allen, and it's time to go racing. All right, here we go at Charlotte, starting seventh, ready to race. Chase Elliott is on the pole. Let's see if we can have a decent race here. So following Harvick into turn number one in fourth gear. Just try to stay on the bottom here. I want to get to the top pretty quick here because I feel like the uh, AI go fairly slow in the corners and it may make it things quite difficult to get around. We're going three wide here with Kevin Harvick and Jimmy Johnson. And we just <laughs> drive all the way up to third. Okay. I was not expecting that was not expecting that to work but it did so now we chase Brad Keselowski and Dale Earnhardt Jr. and maybe we can get around Dale Jr. too here around the outside running the Larson line an inch away from the wall may have been a bit of an, a bit of an exaggeration getting in the draft of Keselowski here we're going to need it we're down on straight line speed compared to the Hendrick and Penske power here and right up next to the wall again on the exit and we're up to second. Oh my goodness, are we gonna actually uh, lead this thing? I don't wanna speak too soon here. But darn it, we are right up in this we're right up in the fight here. Kind of surprised. Again, we're competitive. It's weird to be competitive in this game. And I actually made this point in the Dover game, uh, or in the Dover race that uh, didn't see the light of day. Uh, that I will tell you that the one thing they really got right is the fact that you struggle, 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 and once you finally kind of get competitive, 
it's a very satisfying experience. But um, yeah, it is a process. And if they got rid of the rubber banding, I think it would be way more fun. Because you'd actually feel like you're grinding. Because every position would actually be earned rather than just handed to you. That's my major complaint with the career mode of this game. It's that they hand you positions and it's just, um, you know, if you screw up, you should be punished for it. And by the same token, you shouldn't be punished for going, performing above what the game expects you to, and then they send the AI rubber banding by you again just to pass you. That's frustrating. So we are absolutely flying behind Keselowski right now. The uh, field has kind of gotten spread out a little bit. I wonder when traffic's going to come into uh, play here. That's going to be interesting because I don't know how that's going to work out. But we are staying up with Keselowski and, in fact, gaining on him through the corners here. Uh, really closed in there in three and four. If I can get a really good run here in a bit, I may be able to pass him for the lead. I'm just going to have to wait and see. Obviously, uh, we're, we're gapping second and third place, or, uh, yeah, third and fourth place and, and further on back. So that's good. Don't have to worry about them. Keselowski's running a weird line, running very low off of turns uh, one and two there. I don't know if he's driving defensively or what. And, no, here we go. Here we go. I uh, didn't get the run I quite wanted there, but we're closing in. We're definitely running faster than Keselowski. In fact, we uh, just ran our fastest lap of the race. One and two is really where I make up a lot of time here. And here we go. Another big run down the back straightaway. Right in his slipstream. But again, we don't have a lot of power, and that's the problem. And <laughs> I kind of got silent there because I was afraid I was going to either A, hit the apron, B, uh, end up in the back of Keselowski's trunk, or C, end up in the wall. And now I've ended up in the grass, and I lost all the time I made up. All the time I made up. That's very annoying. Okay. Now, Harvick's closing in from behind, but it doesn't matter. Again, we're faster. We are faster than Keselowski, so we lost that time, but we can make it back up. We can make it back up. It's weird to actually have confidence in the car, as long as you don't get on the grass <laughs> in this game. Very weird, but, but satisfying. Like I said, it's very satisfying to actually be competitive for once in this game. So let's see if we can get up there. Get a win. How about that? Is, that? is that in the cards today? God, I hope it is. Let's see if we can close in here on Keselowski. A little bit of lifting going on there. He's running very low once again. I don't know if that's a defensive line or just the line he wants to run. Again, very close to the grass he was that time. Ten laps complete. At least this isn't the uh, not Indy 500, which is a 600-mile race, and that... You know, that's still 100 laps, so thankfully this one's a merciful distance of 84 laps. Which is slightly less annoying than the uh, 100 laps or whatever they have you run for the not Indy 500 600. And we're right down next to the white line. Wow, it is weird to be competitive. It, like, I'm expecting the people in behind to just come up and fly by me, but they're just not. They're just not. It's very weird. So on the throttle once again, right up next to the groove, or at, at the outside of the groove. We haven't really gotten back to Keselowski's bumper. It's going to take a few laps, I'm imagining, just because of how much time we lost and the fact that the tires are going to go off a bit. So that's going to, you know, restrict a little bit of our cornering speed that we had previously. But at the very least, I, I can say it a hundred times. I'll say it a hundred times more. It is nice to be competitive. It is nice to have a car capable of winning this thing. Now, of course, I'm expecting to get screwed by a yellow when we come in the pits. That always seems to happen in NASCAR heat and end up a lap down and not be able to actually compete for the victory. But while it's lasting, it's very nice. So I kind of got up close to the wall there. It wasn't really a good corner. Long time to go. We're still... Uh, running in the 31 so we're not losing too much pace at the moment and I ran a bad lap that time so I feel like uh, oh and I'm starting to see lap traffic off in the distance too so this is gonna 
Gonna add another element to this thing. How effectively me or Brad Keselowski can handle that traffic is gonna be very key to this thing. And I, you know what? Here's a conspiracy theory. Notice how Brad Keselowski's kind of improved in the last few weeks, maybe uh, since he got that uh, the beer sponsorship on his car. I wonder if DMI gave him a bad AI until uh, until they got the beer sponsorship uh, worked out, and then they uh, gave him his proper AI back, just so they can hide the blue deuce car or the Brad car, whatever you want to call it, uh, just in the background, so that uh, you wouldn't see it in so many let's plays or uh, screenshots or reviews or what uh, what have you. Well, that was me getting up into the wall, which is slightly frustrating. Let's see, 70 laps to go. Now we're on the grass, and this is just... Got hit by Casey Kane, and... Everything's gone wrong. That grass, man. That grass. It's a killer. We were second. We were freaking second. Alright. Six laps to go on the fuel. So, we're still in, we're still in business here. Um, not sure what the damage is going to do to the car. That's the one thing I'm kind of concerned about. Yeah. Just as I suspected, it's really affected the turn in of the car. So I may add some tape to the grill. Try to uh, loosen up the car a bit on the next stop. Of course, the problem is that's going to probably add some time to my stop. But whatever. You gotta compromise with the damage. Keselowski's already in the pits. There's a lot of cars in the pits, actually. We're getting, are we getting amazing fuel mileage too? God, wouldn't that be nice? Either that, or they're out strategizing me, uh, realizing that they're gonna, not gonna make it to the end. But yeah, it looks like a ton of cars coming into the pits this time by as well. Uh, lots of cars did that little uh, jerk to the uh, inside to show that they're coming in. And it is most of the field indeed. In fact, P1. We got the lead finally. All right. All right. I can work with this. I can work with this. Okay. So let's see how many laps we are going to be able to stretch this thing. Three more laps, and I intend to stretch it as far as it goes. Despite the fact that they're going to be on fresher tires, I'm not terribly concerned about that fact. Uh, because again, I will have fresher tires longer, and again, I'll be able to stretch the fuel longer. So all of those things adding up would be very nice. The only thing I wish I would have done is gone for lap leader money. That would have been two fairly easy paydays in a row there. But oh well, live and, live and learn, I suppose. Moving into turn three once again. Should have to pit this time by, I believe. We're actually gaining on uh, whoever this is. I think it's Chris Busher at the back of the field. Putting the whole field lap down. I'm fine with that. All right, coming around. And the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is, is uh, getting into the pit. So I'm going to be very cautious coming in here. Thank you, spotter, thank you. All right, into the pits we come. Four tires, fuel, and a little bit of tape to, to the grill to uh, hopefully balance the car out over the long run. Waiting, waiting, waiting. We're gonna lose some positions, obviously, because of the pit strategy, the way it's gonna work out. I'm not too concerned about it at the moment. We'll probably get that yellow anyway that immediately always seems to happen after the, uh, the uh, pit stop anyway. And we're up to 7th. And I continue to lose positions because I'm very slow on the uh, uh, pit exit. So there we go. Up to 10th. Or down to 10th, whatever you want to look at it. If you're an optimist or a pessimist. Now we're up to 11th. <laughs> Let's see how the handling is. Definitely loosen the car up. Uh, feels... I don't know. We're going to have to see what we do here on a, on a fast lap. Kyle is, or Kurt is pulling away quite a bit. And into turn one. 
Eh, it's alright. Handling is alright. I don't think it's terribly improved. But then again, 1 and 2 is slightly slower than 3 and 4, so we'll see what happens in 3 and 4 here. Yeah, there's definitely a lot more grip in 3 and 4, so we improved our car in one half of the track and the other half not so much, so that's fine. One half of a lap time improvement is better than nothing. Alright, Kurt. Alright, Kurt. Dang it. And Blaney gets around as well. Okay. Let's effectively use lap traffic this time. The Benedetto, will you hold your line, please? Hold your line. That is not holding your line. That is absolutely not holding your line. Oh, God. Can we get a yellow, please? No. Damn lap cars. Oh, I said it. Hashtag David Lane exposed. Okay, alright. <laughs> Take a chill pill. We're still in this. The money position is a top 10 for me. As long as I can get a top 10, we're good. Of course, good is a relative term, of course. Alright, so we should be able to pass McMurray here. Around the outside we go. And of course, our straight line speed is crap. So, into turn three, flat out, a little bit of lift in the center, and around the corner we go. But uh, the game would be really merciful if everybody else in the field has to pit and uh, I get to stay out because of my fuel strategy, which would be excellent. And then I get to pit under the yellow, repair all my damage, and still maintain the lead. Wouldn't that be nice? But I'm not expecting that to, to happen. Still a very long way to go, though. So, as a... Uh, your NASCAR commentators usually say, anything can happen. That's why we run the race. So that's why we're running the race. I need 58 friggin' laps to go. There's plenty of time to screw up and plenty of time to gain. So now we're coming up on De Benedetto once again. And hopefully he does not completely screw us up this time. Just hopefully I can effectively pass him, how about that? There's like three or four cars in the pit. There's pro there was probably an accident or something, and yet, uh, where's the yellow? Way out of the groove. Right down to the bottom of the track, in the draft. Off to Benedetto. He's running in 36th position. And mate, hold your friggin' line. Okay, we're in the same friggin' position again. This time I get around him. Thank God for that one. Alright. Now we can get back onto it. Now we can get back onto it. Looks like Truex is up there. Maybe Dale Jr. Definitely Kenza because he was involved in that crash. And hopefully they start getting held up by lap traffic or something to make this uh, process of me catching them a little bit easier. How much fuel? We got 11 laps of fuel. So that's going to put us at lap number 41 before we have to pit again. So that's not exactly halfway, which is slightly concerning as well because it means there's probably going to be a splash at the end of the race necessary in terms of strategy. But again, that could all go out the window with one yellow, so... Cue the caution, I'm sure. So, let's see. We are absolutely catching these guys, so... No problem there. You just gotta get up to them and then uh, pass them. And that is easier said than done. 
took Almondinger, Kyle Busch, Kenseth, and Truex. And then there's some lap cars there. I see a blue car, which I'm pretty sure is not on the lead lap. So we'll just have to see how that works out. I, I should be more confident getting down on the apron. I haven't been spun out on the apron at Charlotte, really, unless another car has gotten into the back of me. I'm just not confident about it. That I should not be confident with, getting on the grass, though. That has screwed me like three times this race. Particularly out of the lead, or out of the battle for the lead. In fact, that's not Kyle Busch, that's Chris Busher. It's a lapper. Uh, careful what you wish for, kids. I uh, wish for lap cars, and I've got them, and now they are causing me a bit of distress. Alright, come on, car. Come on. Get on it, buddy. Get on it. Okay, so there are three cars then to overtake here. We can theoretically get up to 15th here if we're effective in the traffic. If I can get a good exit here, and get around Busher on the straightaway, which would be very advantageous, because I really don't want to be battling him in the corners. And to turn number three, got to be a bit of aggressive here. All clear. And I was, and I was. I got around him. So now it's Danica. As Almendinger makes a takes a shot there at uh, Kenseth, and I think Danica's a lap down, probably a lapped car. So on the throttle, really effective cornering here in two and three, or one and two, two and three. Exactly what tracks are are where? <laughs> what, name me a track where turns two and three are strung together. It's usually one and two and three and four, but two and three? I I don't know. Right out to the wall. Okay, Danica is definitely holding up this little group here. Ooh, and uh, Almendinger about to spun her there. There's cars in the pits, because uh, we just gained a ton of positions there. So add another element to it. Fuel strategy. And looks like Kenseth is already going to come in, because he kind of swung down to the inside there. Got right around Danica. I had to lift off just a little bit there, wasn't sure what was going to happen, and they all go in. They all go in, so... I wish I wouldn't have hit the wall, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. And there is Danica looking to the inside. Now would be a great time for yellow, because we got five laps left on the fuel. We're lapping cars here, we're lapping guys who would be the leaders. We're only up to second, though, somebody else is leading the race. Who it could be? I think it may be Jimmy Johnson up there, but we'll have to see. There is a car pitting. Looks like Kurt Busch, maybe. We'll see. Yep, yep, it was Kurt Busch because we passed him and took the lead over. So leading once again on fuel mileage. Fine with me. I want to look at the tires here. So if I can take two, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I think I can. I think I can get away with two. You, gotta re you just, you just got to change that front right. That's the thing. And then hopefully no tires if we do have to make a splash at the end of the race. Which I'm hoping doesn't have to happen, but may not be able to make that decision. So we're holding off uh, Joey Logano here. He's on fresh tires. We're on older tires. He just got held up by the lap car of a net, which is good. Helps me out tremendously. It's a, there's a big old pack. Uh, quite a few car lengths up the road. Oh, and uh, that uh, I saw trouble brewing, and it almost did brew. But uh, somehow we were able to, uh, to get away with it. How many laps left on the fuel here? Up oh, another car in the wall. And we get a yellow. Yes! So after getting the yellow I so desperately needed, we're going to start restart six, I should say. So, so many cars were a lap down that uh, we really benefited from all this. Green is out. Keselowski leads. We're at the halfway point, as you heard the spotter say. And it is a new race. So big pack up in front. Or a small pack, but a very tightly clustered pack. How about that? With uh, Keselowski leading. And uh, looks like Harvick, Johnson, and the rest here. Kane and uh, Hamlin. Excuse me. 
And uh, so it's a six car, make that, yeah, six car breakaway here at the front. And let's see if we can battle with them. Not too concerned about it. Again, I'm getting better fuel mileage than all these guys, and they, you know, at least one of them pitted with me. I think it was Hamlin. Whoever started back there with me, so maybe Kane. <laughs> I don't know. But we're going to have to be methodical about passing these guys. Don't have to be too aggressive about it. Down to the inside, slice to the inside, try to get around Jimmy. Got to be very careful in these dog legs. With this, the AI in NASCAR Heat are incredibly unpredictable in dog legs. And split the difference. Had to make that move stick, and I did. Wonderful timing. And Jimmy's going to come back to the inside. It should be able to get around him here in three with a draft off of Kane. On the throttle late. Around Hamlin. Had to lift off, heed the position there because I was worried he was going to come up into me. But I kept Johnson behind me. So that's very good. Very good. And now, and now, now hear this. We're behind Denny Hamlin and hopefully can get around him as well. Big time draft down the back straightaway. And around the outside. Can we make it stick though? No, have to concede the position. Seems like the passes need to happen. I need to complete them in three. I feel like the outside, I'm going to have to be the inside, I mean, of uh, the dog leg to really complete a pass. Unless I can do it here, right next to the Larson line there. And couldn't quite pull it off. So, and Hamlin is defending the inside. He has a right to that, I suppose. And get blocked by both of them. Now we got to make sure that we don't let Jimmy Johnson back through. Yeah, block that effectively. Hamlin almost in the grass. We know the dangers of that. Big time draft. Come on, get around the outside of him. And a yellow. So, um, yeah, that's going to be weird. I guess we'll get another restart. All right, so we are restarting in P5. Still cars behind us there. Eric Jones is up in the top. Looks like Dale Jr. is going to join the fight here at the front of the field. Green's out. And maybe we can make this a little bit more effective here on the restart. We're already up to uh, battling for third with Casey Kane. Now how effectively can we stay to the bottom here? That's going to be a big key here. We're underneath Hamlin. Oh, I had to block to the bottom and allowed Hamlin through. May allow Dale Jr. through. At least I'm on the preferred line. Ooh, that was close. It was really close. The car is incredibly fast. And it feels even faster on this restart than it was on the previous one. We get underneath Hamlin. I had to bully him a little bit. We did it. Around Hamlin for fourth. So, here we go. Four car freight train with Keselowski continuing to dominate the race. With Kane, who has uh, shown some impressive pace here. Harvick, who's been up at the front, give him a little bit of a bump draft, try to get him through that corner a little bit faster. Again, the dog leg kind of out of the question to pass in that uh, corner, so we're gonna just leave it to uh, leave it to these boys to fight it out in the dog leg, and I can try to find more effective ways to pass, safer ways to pass. Let's see if we can get that run off of turn two. Harvick defending to the bottom of the track. Once again, gonna be very difficult to get around him. Uh, maybe we can do it if we, hey, he leaves a lane. No, he didn't leave a lane. And I was all the way down there on the apron. Very dangerous. Looks, I, I mean, you can run on the apron, but good Lord, I am just not going to chance it. Cannot chance it. And a lift. And pull through this corner here. Try to dive to the bottom. Get that draft. We will be able to get through the corners a little bit faster. I may be able to set up a better run now that I'm not completely bound to what these guys are running because I'm so close to them. Actually, it may have been a bit of a benefit to me to fall back just a little bit, set up the run on these guys. Getting a very, very good draft off of Harvick. And lifting off right up next to the top of the track. 
Again, running the Larson line. Don't feel like that was particularly the most effective line through there. We'll draft with Kane because Harvick's defending to the bottom, as well as Kozlowski is. Into three and four. Very. And the leader's in, so Kozlowski has to pit. It's a battle for the lead now between Kane and Harvick. Hopefully I can get through here. We're going to have to make one more stop. I know that for a fact. Probably the rest of the field is as well. In fact, I don't know that for a fact. How many laps do we have on the fuel? Eight. So, yeah, we'll have to pit in eight laps, and that will be the last stop of the day. And we're running so well now that I feel like I'm going to absolutely take four tires. No need to risk it. Actually, I'm going to take a look. Can I risk it? Oh, Harvick's in the pits. No, I can't risk it. I could probably take... I could maybe get away with two. You know what? I'm going to go with two. I'm going to make that executive decision. But then again, we'll see. Just have to see what, what works out and what doesn't here. Around the outside. See if we can't get around Casey Kane here. We've got to take the lead on pace. We have to. We have to do it. Into three. Right down to the bottom. Ah, so close. Felt like I was going to hit that apron. I just had to back out of it just a little bit. I'm not going to hit the grass this time battling for the lead, though. Not this time. We are, going to take the, we are going to take this on pace. We're going to do it cleanly, or as clean as possible. So on the throttle here, trying to pull up behind Kane. We're still under the draft of him. The controller's still vibrating, so we got that, got that sniff of draft, and that's what you need. Into the corner. A little high. A lot high. As long as we don't get past. Just keep driving. Just keep getting this car. Okay, I'm just going to start focusing on a new strategy. I'm going to focus on some consistent lap times. Just going to consistently keep the car around the track. It may sound like an easy thing to say, easy uh, easy analysis, but uh, that's what I'm going to do. Let's see if that's more effective than just trying to drive the thing into the corner as hard as possible, trying to catch Kane, and immediately looks like I made up a ton of time on him. So Dale Jr. behind goes into the pits, so once again, just me and Kane up there. I knew Kane was the car that went into the pits with me. So uh, we're on the same fuel strategy. So whatever happens to Kane will happen to me in this race. So that's why it would have been important to pass him. So let's see if we can get back up there and pass him before the fuel runs out. And once again, I'll check the tires here next time we get on the back straightaway because I want to see what, if it's it's a good idea to go with two 72 and 73 so essentially over the course of a stint you lose about 30 percent of the tires on the left side so just going with rights i just don't know how many laps are we going to have uh, it's going to be close to a full stint anyway i feel like it's almost better just to go with four i won't have to make any more adjustments or repairs and there is Casey Kane pulling into the pits. So we're going to take the lead here. So now the uh, strategy really kicks in. So 22 to go. And fuel is... I missed it. Missed the menu. Three laps. Ugh. We're still going to be cutting it close on fuel. Even by filling it up. It's, it's going to be an interesting finish here, but that, that does fill me with some confidence that the rest of the field is absolutely going to have to pit again. Or at least, there's, there's nobody who can make it right now. Everybody has to make at least one more stop. So, I'm not as concerned about it as I would be. So let's wait for that fuel alarm to come on. It should come on the next time by, because we're making such great mileage right now. It's really helping out. Okay. Whoa, fuel alarm is on now. Eh. That was a late decision. Slow down. Terrible pit entry was compounded by the fact that there were a couple cars that held me out coming held me up coming out of the pits. Estimated 16.1 on the stop here. Come on boys, you can be faster than that. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Waiting for the rest of the field to come by. And yeah, it's exactly 16.1. So I gotta be very effective here on the exit of the pits. Already down to sixth.
And that wasn't very effective. Casey Kane gets by. As well as Harvick and Keselowski. So we're down to ninth, down to tenth. Dale Jr. got around as well. Okay, so 20 laps to go. And there are 19 laps of fuel, of course. Oh boy. Oh boy. I've just got to hope that I get the effective fuel mileage. So around Stenhouse, we're a lap down. Somebody was able to stay out, but we're only uh, only 11th. So somebody's just lapped the field. Somebody's on a better fuel strategy than I am, which is kind of shocking. So in the draft of Hamlin here, start to use these. Uh, try to use these uh, new tires as effectively as possible and just try to pick our way through the field. Okay, so 18 laps to go, 17 laps of fuel. I cannot believe that. I should have stretched it an extra lap. I really should have, because now we're in big trouble. Because we're going to run out with one lap to go, it looks like. Ugh. And I don't know if you can fuel save in this game. Oh, this is this is really concerning. I, I really a yellow would be so helpful right now. So very helpful. I don't know if we'll get it. So we'll have to race for it. And we have got to pass guys. Passing guys is the way to do this here. So we get around Hamlin for tenth, up into the top ten. That's money position. So right now we're in the money for Tax Act, I believe. Tax Act uh, and there's Tony Stewart coming in the pits. I think he's several laps down. Yeah, we didn't gain any positions there. So, uh, bad dig uh, gets worse for Tony Stewart. 16 to go. I'm not even going to look at the fuel mileage. <laughs> There's uh, not a lot I can do about that. 15 to go and 16 laps. There's not a lot you can do. Not a lot you can do. So let's uh, draft off a of Dale Jr. here. Another car coming into the pits. That is uh, Carl Edwards, and that is for position. So some guys are starting to make that uh, all-important final stop. In fact, several of them are. Okay, now it's time to race because they're all pitting. Up to fifth place, or it should be once we get around Dale Jr. here. Can we into turn number three? Yes, parked it on the apex. He's going to get back to the inside in the tri-oval here. He didn't come up into me. At least he's a fair racer. I appreciate that, Dale. That's a good, it's good racing. That's all that is. I was afraid he was going to run into me. And this time we drive around the outside of him, have that extra grip there in the corners. It's fantastic. Well, well done there, Mr. Land. Well done. So fi uh, fifth place. There's three of the four I need to pass up there. With Harvick and Johnson getting held up by DiBenedetto. He's been a bit of a moving chicane today, hasn't he? 13 to go. Estimated fuel is 13 now. So we... Oh, boy. Oh, boy, folks. Uh-oh. Oh, no. This, this could happen. Okay. So we're doing it on pace. We're making fuel mileage. Oh, my gosh. The heart rate is starting to increase a bit. Just got to stay calm here. I don't know what is going to happen now. Because the fuel mileage seems to be leveling out with the amount of laps we're running. So are the people in front of us, who are right in front of us, by the way, we could win this thing on pace and then fuel mileage because Kane, Keselowski, Johnson, and Harvick are all right directly in the crosshairs here. Now, Kane just got through the lap traffic. Keselowski got held up, as did Harvick and Johnson. So, with 11 laps on the fuel, we should be coming by for 11 laps to go. Ooh. This is, this is tense here. We make it around Harvick and Johnson, who may be fuel sa I don't know if the AI saved fuel either. Do they, do they try to save fuel? 
boy, I just don't know what is going to happen. And Keselowski pits from second. Brad Keselowski pits from second. Johnson is now all over the back of us for, uh, for second. Uh, lots of cars sw swapping positions here for second place. Oh, bad corner. Bad corner. Bad corner. Here comes Johnson down to the inside. He is going to get by. So it's uh, land speed racing uh, fuel mileage versus Hendrick fuel mileage. It's two Hendrick cars out in front of me. Johnson really parked it on the apex there. He, is he going to get held up by Danica, though? They're side by side in the dog leg. Had to lift off a little bit there. Was not confident going around the outside of Danica with uh, Johnson underneath like that. It looks like Casey Kane's getting held up as well. Oh, we're in the draft of Jimmy. Well, you guys can just look at the fuel mileage there. What we're making. What we need to make. Is Johnson pitting? No, he's not. Kane is still mired in traffic, though he got around the two cars of Stenhouse and, and Annette. There's the eight laps to go on the fuel. And uh, you saw it, eight laps to go. Johnson, does he get held up here? Is he going to make a... Oh, he's going to make a three wide. Ooh, that's annoying. That was a desperation move from me. Had to get around the traffic there, which it did. Pull around Stenhouse as well. I really need some help here from the traffic. Really need some help. And I'm getting it, because that's Kane getting held up by... I believe it's McDowell and now Johnson and Kane are gonna split McDowell in the traffic they're three wide for the lead well two of the cars are in a three wide battle for the lead how about that um, can we get around Michael McDowell though which direction is he going to go to he stays the inside well played Michael McDowell well played the leaders are side by side and that is just helping me out. Chase Elliott's going to come into a factor here. He was actually the pole sitter of this dang race. So 300 cars. It looks like Kane is pulling to the inside. He may be pulling in to, to try to take a pass on his teammate there, Chase Elliott. And Chase Elliott is holding them both up. Oh, my goodness. And Kane's in. Kane is in. Kane is in the pits. He could not make it. And now Chase Elliott is holding up. Jimmy Johnson, five to go. Five to go this time by. Running the Larson line. Elliot is holding up Johnson. Come on, we can get around him. Oh my goodness, is this going to happen? And I'm using Elliot as a pick and putting Johnson in my rear view mirror. Fantastic. And I almost got turned by Elliot. Really up towards the wall there. And Johnson's in. No, he got held up by Chase Elliot. He got held up by Chase Elliot, who had to pit. Four laps to go, four on the fuel. Oh my God, we're gonna do it. We are going, I think we may do it. This is it, folks, this this is it. I think the breakthrough is about to happen. I'm, I, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, cars peeling off into the pits. Johnson is still hounding me from behind. So we got four laps on the fuel, still remaining four laps, and now three laps to go. So the fuel mileage is starting to work out. We, it just said three going into turn one, so we are saving enough fuel right now to get to the end. Jimmy Johnson is still back there, though. He's still back there. He has not gone into the pits. So it's between me and Jimmy Johnson for the win here in potentially a fuel mileage race here in the chase. Several, several cars in the pits. Still see Jimmy Johnson in the rearview mirrors. Two laps to go, three laps on the fuel. And we're waiting to see that cross over it into two. Still hasn't, still hasn't, still hasn't. Still hasn't, now it crosses over into two. That time by, so we're coming to get the white flag this time. I'm not gonna look at the fuel anymore. And a yellow. Oh no! Green-white checker. Oh, Green-white checker.
You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. I've got th I've got three laps of fuel. Should I pit? Uh, I'm gonna pit. So I pitted. I'm fifth. Green white checker. What's gonna happen? Race is on. Two laps. Got all the fuel I need. Now it's just a matter of pace. Do we have the pace or do we not? Right now I'm leaning towards not. We're better in the corners. We've got fresher tires. Ugh. Had to really be aggressive there. Had to really be aggressive there. But I also had to concern concern myself with the fact that I run a race team and we do have to look after the sponsors. Oh. We were literally two corners away from winning this race. Literally two corners away from winning the race. Oh. I just, I'm crushed. <laughs> Checkered is out. Fifth place. Easily the best. Easily the best race I've ever had in NASCAR heat. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it goes, it's terrible for, for me. Crushing defeat. So a fifth place. Fifth place, and it, it was absolutely first. Oh. That is just so frustrating. I can't even tell you. There's the uh, rest of the field rundown. Ugh. Well, at least we're going to have some consolation here. With some serious money. Coming 41,000. CJ Energy Services provides us with 12. Tax Act gives us a big payday with 24. 10 from peak for the 20th place finish. Or 20th qualifying and 20,000 from Lincoln Welders. And we finally break $100,000 for one race. Fantastic result. Let's take a look at the points. Hopefully we at least got out of 30th. And uh, we may have actually done so. Let's see. Yes, 29th. 29th in the points. So something to come away with. Uh, but uh, man, oh man, it was almost so, so much more. So let's head uh, back to the garage and see if, uh, if that performance got us anything. So the next race from Charlotte will be Kansas, and clearly we'll, we will be looking to uh, improve um, on that result. The fifth, uh, that was a, just a fantastic race. I hope you guys were entertained by that. Darn it, we, we almost won it. We were two corners away from winning this darn race, but um, we got uh, almost half a million in the bank, and we can make some improvements to the car as well. Don't know if I'll do it. I'll probably do it in the next video. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video.